This After Effects tutorial is sponsored by Storyblocks.com. In this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a glowing neon line animation inside of After Effects using a free After Effects plugin called Saber. It's a very cool plugin and you can use it in a number of different ways. We will be using it to create a background neon lines with some reflected flows as well. We will take a look at various different techniques throughout the complete tutorial. So make sure you watch it till the end so you don't miss out anything. I am Nikhil from dopemotions.com and without any further ado, let's jump into After Effects and get started. Alright, so here we are in After Effects. Let's start by creating a new composition. I'm going to go with 1920 by 1080. Let's call this render as our main render comp. 10 seconds long, 30 FPS and hit OK. Then let's um, create a new solid. So hit Ctrl Y to create a new solid. And I'm going to call this, um, let's call this wave underscore 01. Okay. And then I'm going to select the pen tool and create some waves right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start from right here and you can click and hold shift and drag the handle just like so. Then go right over here, click and hold shift and drag it to create a perfect, uh, you know, kind of a curve you can call it. And then I'll just move this one right here, create one right over here and then right here. Then right over here, one right here and one more just like so. Alright, now you don't need to worry if your shape is not perfect. It can be absolutely abstract, but if you want, you can always go ahead and tweak it. So I can just maybe tweak this like so, you know, hold it and make some changes like that. Looks pretty nice to me. And then I'm going to go into effects and preset and type in Saber to add our plugin. Let's double click and then let's go into custom core and from core type, I'm going to set this from Saber to layer mask. And there we have this really nice waveform. Now I'm going to hit uh, on the small icon, go into mask and select the mask path just like so. You can zoom in, hit V and then you can select the point, move them a bit up, something like that looks good to me. Let's create a keyframe on the mask path and what I'm going to do is move everything just right over here and then go all the way up to 10 seconds and then select all the mask path, the complete mask path and move this right over here. So basically we have this nice and simple movement. All right. And then we can animate the start offset and the end offset. So at the end offset, I'm going to set this down to zero and for the start offset i'm going to start from 10 percent all right let's create a keyframe on the start offset go all the way up to 10 seconds and set this all the way up to 100 so now basically we have this really nice movement as you can see looking pretty good and that is what i am going for now let's add a nice and simple flicker at the start of this. So I'll go to around 10 seconds, 10 frames and hit T to bring down the opacity, create a keyframe at hundred percent, hold control and alt and click on the stopwatch, which is going to create a whole keyframe, hit page down to go one frame forward, hit page down again to go two frame backward, sorry, not forward and set this to zero. Let's hit two times, set this to hundred, go two times back, two frames back set this to zero and basically keep on repeating this. So this will give us a really nice flicker as you can see. Now I can select all the keyframes, hold alt and control at the same time and click on them. This is going to create a whole keyframe and we get this really nice flicker. Maybe I'll keep this a bit more. So I'll go one frame forward, set this to zero, hit page down, set this to hundred, you know, something like that and then move them a little bit. So I think it's a bit too slow for my liking. So I can select all the keyframes, hold alt and let's close them up like so. And yeah, that is pretty nice. 
So there we have our first wave. Now let's duplicate this hit control D to duplicate it. Also, I'm going to select both the layers, hit F4 and set the blending mode to screen. And for the second one, I'm going to set this to a kind of a nice darkish pink. And basically now I'm going to move my time indicator at the very start. And now we can tweak the path of this one. So I'm going to hit U. So we can select the path. We can get rid of the keyframe for now. And then I'm going to tweak this. I can change the basically the way the path looks. So I can move this up, move this one a bit down like so. Move this one up, this one down, this one up a little bit and this one down. So I can anytime like zoom in and adjust it doesn't really matter. We can go abstract if we want to pretty uh, cool. So we have this really nice shape as you can see. Now again, I'll select the mask path, create a keyframe, go at the end that is 10 seconds, select the complete path and move this one like so. All right. And now we have this very interesting look as you can see. Now, before we proceed further with this tutorial, let me tell you about today's sponsor Storyblocks. As an editor, how much time have you wasted looking for that perfect video clip or maybe that perfect music for your videos or a simple graphic animation? As an editor, don't you wish there was a simple and affordable way to find the clips and graphics for your projects? What if I told you there is? There is Storyblocks. Storyblocks offers thousands of studio quality and royalty free stock video clips, after effects templates, motion graphics backgrounds, intros and so much more. Everything is royalty free so you can use it for your commercial projects or for your old YouTube videos which is super awesome. Storyblocks offers affordable subscription plans that scale to meet your needs and a new video editing tool called Maker. I use Storyblocks myself for my client projects because with their unlimited all access plan, I can download unlimited assets and use Maker and I only have to pay a single price per year. So go ahead and check out storyblocks.com slash dope motions or click the first link in the description below. Pretty cool. Now you can anytime adjust this. You can create your own cool looking waves. You can add more and more waves if you want to, but I think two looks good as of now. Now let's create some reflection for this to make it look a bit more realistic. But before that, let's right click, create a new camera. I'm going to go with a 50 millimeter preset, hit OK. All right, so I'm going to make this layers yellow. So these are our main layers. Let's duplicate them, hit Ctrl D, pull them down and make them red. All right, so these are going to be our reflection. So let's hide them one by one. Let's select this. Let's hit F4, select all of them, make them 3D. And then I'm going to select this one, hit R and rotate this like around, let's go with something like 95 degrees or something. And um, pull that one down like so. So we have something like this. So we have a nice reflection as you can see. It's pretty good. Same thing I'm going to do with this one. Let's turn this on. Hit R and let's rotate this by 95 degrees and pull this down a bit. There we go. Also, I'm going to bring down the opacity of these two layers. So hit T and bring that down to around 50%. Uh, but because we have already created a keyframe on the opacity, what we can do is select this, go into effects and preset, type in transform. This is going to give us another opacity control. So I'm going to set the opacity of this one to 50. Create a key, uh, hit control C to copy this effect and paste it on the second one as well. And then, then go into the camera options. Let's go into camera options, turn on depth of field. Let's increase the aperture all the way up to 600 and blur level to somewhere around 350 to get a really nice um, depth. But we get one issue with this and the issue is you can see we get this cropping corners here and we don't want that, right? Because the complete effect is looking pretty good, but we get this kind of a croppy corner. So to fix this, I'm going to create a new null object. All right. Hold control and double click on the pan behind tool to set the anchor point into the center and then align the null object into the center. Turn this into a 3D layer and then parent the camera to this null object. I can select the null object, hit P and let's adjust the position. So I'm going to keep it somewhere around there and let's bring that up just a touch like around so. 
all right and then i can adjust my camera's um focal length so i'll go into focus distance and let's find the right focal length that looks good i think yeah let's hide the control layers and you can see we get a really interesting look we can play around with the blur level i can make it really intense if i want to i think no pretty cool that looks great i think and you can adjust the focus distance as well looks good and there we have created our waveform so now we can go ahead and add some text to this but before that hit ctrl y create a background call this bg make sure to dra drag and drop it at the back let's create a new adjustment layer call the cc and then go into fix and preset and add some noise so we don't get any kind of color bending so i can just double click um, on the noise let's go around maybe around two percent and turn off use color noise and let's set this to full to see the final look i think it's looking pretty nice and also i can switch to 16 bits per channel so i can hold alt and click on the small icon right here so that we get some better glows but this is going to be a bit heavy on the system so make sure you turn this into 16 bits only when you want to render the complete comp so there you go we have this really cool look and finally i can you know add some curves adjustment to this so let's go in effects and preset type in curves and let's drag and drop it onto our color correction and let's punch up the colors a bit And as you can see, this is looking pretty awesome. And then finally, I can select my text tool and type in my text. So I'm going to type in neon waves. For the font, I will be using integral, one of my all time favorite. Let's increase the size, set this to zero and let's adjust the position. And then you can basically animate the font the way you want. And it looks super awesome and dope. So I hope you guys enjoy this video on how to create this cool neon wave lines inside of After Effects using Saber, which is a free plugin. So if you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button and comment down below and just let me know that motivates me a lot. And if you're watching my video for the very first time, make sure you subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon so you always get notified whenever I post a new video. With that said, that is a wrap for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care and always stay raw, stay creative. Peace out.